Welcome back. So in the last video we spent a good deal of time talking about tRNA and now we're going to talk about how you activate the amino acid using a tRNA. And this is one of the first enzymes that we're going to spend a little bit of time on and this is about the enzyme aminoacyl tRNA synthetase. And it turns out that this is an enzyme that's absolute, absolutely required in order to um, bring the amino acid to the ribosome so that the ribosome can polymerize the amino acids. Okay, so that's literally what an, a, a ribosome is, is it's a protein slash RNA machine that polymerizes amino acids into a protein and this enzyme is required for that. So here's the idea. Aminoacyl tRNA synthetase is required to attach the tRNA to an amino acid. Okay, that's literally the definition I want you to use on an exam. Okay, so let's look at the generic reaction here. Okay, so if I notice that here's the tRNA, this is of course just a kind of a rough, a rough sketch of it. This is a tRNA. And then here's a free amino acid. This particular one is tryptophan. And what's essentially going to happen in an ATP dependent reaction, here's the adenosine triphosphate, in an ATP dependent reaction, notice what happens is the amino acid essentially gets ligated to the tRNA so that you get this high energy bond between the tRNA and the amino acid. And what this essentially does is it activates the amino acid. Okay. Now here's the idea. You have to imagine now that this amino acid, which happens to be tryptophan, is now covalently attached to this tRNA. Right? Here's the tRNA. And you know this reaction occurs in the cytosol, but let's say the ribosome, here's the ribosome way up here, of course not drawn to scale. Well the job of the tRNA, and remember T stands for what? It stands for transfer. So literally what the tRNA is for is taking the amino acid and transferring it all the way up here to the ribosome. Okay, that's why it's called a transfer RNA. Okay, so that's literally what's going to happen is it, the transfer in RNA is going to take the amino acid all the way to the ribosome and facilitate the polymerization process which is carried out by the ribosome. So that's what I want you to understand is the actual transfer or the ligation of the amino acid to the tRNA is catalyzed by this enzyme aminoacyl tRNA synthetase. You need to be aware of this enzyme. Okay, and what's also important to understand is particular tRNAs are specific for particular amino acids. So this is a good example. Um, if you're using tryptophan, you put tRNA and you put the three letter abbreviation for tryptophan as a superscript. So if you have tRNA for tryptophan, it's tRNA superscript TRP. Um, another example would be if you had a tRNA that's specific for alanine, you'd have tRNA, and then in superscript you put ALA for alanine. Um, if you had tRNA that was specific for phenylalanine, you'd have tRNA and then put PHE up here for phenylalanine. So particular tRNAs are specific for particular amino acids. Okay, So there's lots of different tRNAs that you can have, and the key is that they will particularly have different anticodons. So this right here, this is the anticodon that we talked about in the last video, that binds to a particular codon in the mRNA that is complementary. Okay. Also, one thing I do want you to be aware of is that this is an ATP-dependent reaction. So anytime you need to polymerize amino acids into a protein, it's going to require a lot of energy because to activate the amino acid using aminoacyl tRNA synthetase, for every ligation that you do of an amino acid to a tRNA, you have to burn one ATP. ATP is created mostly in the mitochondria through ATP synthase, um, a process that we'll talk about later in this PowerPoint. It's the last topic. Um, but ATP is like energy currency. It's like money from the cell's perspective. So if you want to do really anything significant in terms of biosynthesis, like biosynthesis of a protein, you've got to waste some energy. And usually the energy comes from things like ATP or GTP. That's pretty typical. So in order to make these proteins, you've got to have a lot of energy available, which means that, you know, for instance, if you want to make proteins, that's a good indication that you've got to eat meals, right? You've got to eat food because that leads to the production of ATP, okay? 
if you're anorexic or something like that, you're not getting lots of energy, and so protein synthesis really goes significantly down, and that leads to the wasting away that people get when they're anorexic. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little sense. You got to have ATP in order to catalyze the reaction of amino acyl tRNA synthetase. Um, because this enzyme is absolutely required for protein synthesis, mutations in this enzyme are lethal. Uh, the individual will probably not survive in utero. Uh, they'll die before they're born. So mutations in amino acyl tRNA synthetase basically make protein synthesis almost impossible for levels to support life. Because keep in mind, proteins in a lot of cases are enzymes. And without enzymes, remember that enzymatic processes, uncatalyzed, are too slow to support life. So this enzyme, you will never find any significant mutations in it. They're lethal. Okay, so hopefully you understand that this enzyme is required to ligate the tRNA to the amino acid, and then the transfer RNA literally takes the amino acid in the bound form to the ribosome. Okay, and when the amino acid is in the bound form to the tRNA, you know, you have all this business right here. This is essentially this right here. This is the adenosine moiety. This is the adenosine moiety. And then you have the rest of the tRNA down here. This is the rest of the transfer RNA. And then you have this amino acid. Here's the carboxyl part of the amino acid. And essentially, it's in an ester bond to the 3' prime hydroxyl group of the tRNA 3' prime end. Okay, so this right here, this is the, this is the amino acid. Okay, and it's on the 3' prime end of the tRNA. Okay. And basically, the ribosome is going to use this to its advantage to polymerize the amino acids into proteins. Okay. One thing I'll mention about the ribosome, because we're going to look at it in the next video, is the ribosome is really unique because we call it an enzyme. But actually, the catalytic component of this enzyme is ribosomal RNA. So this part right here called peptidyl transferase, this is the specific name of the actual enzymatic component of the ribosome. But this is not protein, it's ribosomal RNA. Okay. Um, this is an unusual enzyme because most enzymes are proteins. And actually... The, what, the main substrate of peptidyl transferase is the amino acid ligated to the tRNA. Okay, so in order for the ribosome to be able to polymerize the amino acids into um, proteins, okay, you've got to have this amino acyl tRNA synthetase that ligates the amino acid to the tRNA. Okay, in general, what the ribosome looks for is the tRNA. Okay, the peptidyl transferase component is what really works on this component. If I was to shade this in, this right here is literally the component that peptidyl transferase looks for, okay? It really just deals with the amino acid component. But the vast majority of the ribosome actually looks for this whole component right here. This component is really what the ribosome essentially is looking for. Peptidyl transferase really looks for the amino acid component. But the whole thing is required. You have to have the amino acid ligated to the tRNA, okay? And that process of synthesizing that is carried out by amino acyl tRNA synthetase. And hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, this would be a really short video and again, this enzyme is absolutely required for life. Mutations in it are lethal. So that really concludes that video. In the next video, we'll look at the actual synthesis of protein by the ribosome. That's going to be a little bit longer of a video. See you in the next video.